Well, hello! This is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and Peter Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is September 6th, 2019. I hope everyone had a great Labor Day weekend. We did. We were very fortunate. We had a lot of our friends over, neighbors, and uh, we had a cookout. And uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a, a, a lady friend who's uh, from China come um, with, her, with her, her their better half. And she was good enough to go into Chinatown in Boston and bring some pastries and things. And uh, we did hot dogs and burgers and fresh corn and the weather was nice and uh it was a, it was a great day we had a lot of fun all right so i hope you all did too and maybe got to an auction out there i don't know all right um, a couple of things are going on. One of the things I wanted to bring up, because we've sort of been seeing um, uh, something that led us to think, start thinking about this through the preview assistant and so forth, and we've been getting inquiries about it because there are so many other auctions in the world. And currently, as you know, on bid amount, we tend to focus on things that are on eBay and on Catawiki, and we talk about what the major auction houses are doing here, uh, Christie Sotheby's Bonhams around the world and to John's in Paris from time to time. And But what about all the other other smaller auction houses that also do online auctions and also get very good things because through the inquiry program we've seen some dandy things and it got us to thinking is there a way to uh, create a new, another page technologically on the site where we can pull in this stuff from multiple different types of sites and display it all on one page and keep it updated the way we do the eBay Today page and, and the uh, um, uh, weekly newsletter page because it does take some work and uh, people here you know have to have to get involved with it how to make keep it going but we have expanded the site it's on a, it's on its own virtual private server now so storage is no longer much of a problem and um, we're looking into possibly uh, what the costs will be and so forth to create uh, another branch here off the tree of uh, auctions from you know that are in Europe the Netherlands um, uh, you know uh, uh, Australia Malaysia there's a lot of auctions out there the question is can can we can we pull the stuff in we can go and look at the stuff and, and and let you know if we think it's okay or not but it's it's a matter of technology and cost at this point that we have to hire someone uh, to come in and sort of manage this because the site is as you know has gotten quite big and uh, we'll we'll let you know um, as, as we go along and see see what you think if you like this idea of having you know sites from around the world <clears throat> you know things that are on live auctioneers not only live auctioneers but invaluable Bid Square and a lot of the other small sites. Let me know if you like the idea, because um, um, there's, there's there's a lot to, that goes into doing it more than people realize, and we can we can figure out maybe a way to do it if there's enough interest. So let me know, and I'll bring this up again as we go along. All right. The other thing I wanted to mention was I've had a couple of inquiries about this, and um, uh, pe people are asking about this box. It has a Juan Lee mark on it. Uh, it's being sold by a seller uh, over in uh, in Suffolk, Petrocat. They are not advertising this as an antique box of any kind. Uh, they're just calling it a Chinese signed blue and white box. They're not misrepresenting it, but I think a number of people are starting to think that the seller made a mistake. Uh, it has a, a nice looking Juan Lee mark on it. Here's the inside of it. Here it is with the lid off. This is a brand new box. Okay, this box is made within the last 15, 20 years. The black on it, uh, don't let that fool you. This is uh, just something that they do when they make these so that it look like they've had ink spilled on them and that they're very old. This is not a very old box. This is a very new box. And uh, you, if, unless you want a new box, don't bid on it is what I'm saying. Okay, But this is uh, it closes in four days. It's up to $118. And uh, it may look good to some. It is not any good. So you, you, want, you want to avoid that. The other thing I wanted to mention was that this vase, not this particular vase, but this type of vase that looks like this with these vines on going up the side. It's a lobed body with scrifado ground, that incise decoration. They've been making these for a few years. They turn up on eBay periodically. They come with a wide range of ground colors from yellow to, uh, 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 you know, Lang Yao. Um, I've seen them in tan and brown, tea dust glaze, cobalt blue, you name it. But they all have the same sort of uh, 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 peach, peach tree uh, pattern clinging to it. Some of them have kids perched where the peach beaches are or perched in between them. The, um, the base of them uh, on these are pretty convincing looking. If you've not seen a lot of period ones, uh, this, is a, this is a fake. All right, and they're making these because they're selling them. These are selling um, on multiple sites. I've seen them on Invaluable. I've seen them on BidSquare. I've seen them on Live Auctioneers. These are brand new, all right, and uh, don't, um, um, 
uh, you know, be fooled by it. Okay. Now on to something interesting that happened. Um, uh, back in uh, May or April, we got an inquiry from somebody who had a pair of blue and white vases with birds on them, wanted to know what we thought. And uh, we looked at them. We thought they were awfully good. Um, the, the, the seal on the bottom didn't necessarily tell us who the maker was. So we, we urged him. We said they're probably worth thirty to $50,000. And we urged him to get a hold of Mike Bass at Christie's and uh, see what they think. And uh, he did. And they were immediately accepted into the September sale. Um, and they are selling on September 13th. And I guess that maybe they're a little better in person. They got a forty to sixty thousand dollar estimate from Christie's. They bumped it ten grand over what I thought. So they must they must be really nice in person. Uh, but I, I think they're wonderful, and I wish them well. And I was very happy to see them. We've seen some very good things, but these these were the uh, two that uh, he wrote me to tell me that these these have been included in the Sotheby sale, and he's very happy. Um, and let's all wish him well. I hope I hope they double their high estimate. And it can happen. It happens once in a while, okay? But they're in the site. Um, they're in the September 13th sale. They are a lot number 1141. Um, they, they, they have the slider here. You can bring them in and look at them. And uh, good for him. And I hope, he does, I hope it does great for him. All right. Uh, now on to uh, what sold on eBay last week. It was a funny week. Something's brought a lot, and there were a couple of r real bargains. This was one of them, I think. This was a nice Kangxi ch uh, Chinese Amari uh, 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 tea caddy made, you know, between 1700 and 1722, and that the, toward the end of the second last 20 years or so of the reign. Um, most of a lot of these were exported, as you know. The gilding on it was in good shape, and uh, as many of you know that have handled these things, um, they often have huge amounts of fritting around the upper edge here often very very heavily fritted because of the way they're built and, and the little airs in there and it pops the glaze off and they have a lot of edge and corner fritting this one had didn't have that much it was an awfully nice shape and uh, somebody got a great buy because this should these typically bring three to four hundred and fifty bucks somebody picked this up for two hundred dollars um, uh, that was a, a heck of a nice buy all right so whoever got it, I hope one of you got it because this was this was a, 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 a very nice purchase. Um, they retail these. You go to New York and see what they retail these things for, and they they're anywhere from eight to twelve hundred dollars. So somebody got a fabulous buy on that. The other thing that was a great buy was this Kesey panel, the horse I talked about last week. I loved this. I thought this was really nice. It had a couple of minor stains on it that a good conservator could probably get rid of, but but a very pictorial, rather unusual Kesey, late nineteenth century. I liked it a lot, and somebody got it for just a hundred bucks. And uh, those of you that follow Kesey panels know that's a great deal. That was that was a really good buy. All right, so bravo on that. All right, like I said, I'm always saying, leave a bid. <laughs> Don't just throw it on your watch list. Throw it on your watch list, and then leave a bid. Then you can have it in both places. If you if you if you leave a bid on something, you cannot then go back and add it to your watch list. So you add it to the watch list first, but then always leave a bid. And then you get the notifications so you don't miss it. Because I think a few people probably liked that and uh, missed out on it. All right, now on to this: the Kangxi uh, jar with the heron and this beautiful big uh, uh, tree coming up, pine tree probably something coming up in the middle. Uh, this wonderful rocks and then the the water down below. Uh, this was a nice vase. It had been it had been drilled. Uh, this is uh, had been lamped at one point, but had a nice, uh, good-looking uh, Kangxi base. This is what the bottoms of these look like. Uh, they're very consistent, uh, uh, as with a lot of Kangxi pieces. You had some edge fritting, but this very, very smooth, rounded, uh, stepped-in foot. And if you put your finger on this, they, they almost feel like glass. They're very uh, hard glass. They're very, very, very smooth because the clay was so pure and, and even and nicely done. And uh, that was a nice little pot. And it did just fine. It ended up selling for $2,711. But it was a pretty jar and uh, had, had good color and, and good quality cobalt, even with a hole. This was another bargain of the week. This was a real bargain. Uh, this is a set of three. These are Meiji period cloisonne and enamel uh, uh, footed cups. They're in great graduated sizes from about four inches, you know, four inches tall and then down. Uh, and I, I put these in because I liked them. They were late 19th, very early 20th century. And look at the price. They went for nine dollars and 24 cents. All right. And um, I know these were on people's watch lists, and I don't know what happened. Um, but I, I know three people, I think, that had these on their watch list and had asked about them. And um, somebody, they forgot, okay? Leave a bid. All right. 
That's that. But that was. I feel bad for the seller, but boy, the buyer got a heck of a buy. All right, and then on to this, the late Ming bowl. I like this bowl. I like the the rim on it. I like the shape of it, and I love the color of the cobalt. Nice sapphire cobalt blue, nicely decorated with the flower and vines. Uh, good looking bowl, and in the end, it did pretty well. It brought nine hundred and twenty eight dollars. But good quality, uh, not imperial, of course, but a, a perfectly nice bowl. Um, it had a what is it? Oh, it had a ten bar mark on it. That's right. But it, it's not. It's late. But it was it was a nice bowl. And then over here to the hat pins. These uh, kingfisher feather hat pins are, are very collected in China, even when they have losses like this, because there are people they get them in China and they restore them, and they get some kingfisher feathers and fill them back in. They're 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 put into these almost like cloisonne. They're worked into these little wired areas, and then they're adhered uh, with with this adhesive they have. And uh, these were these are old ones. And uh, somebody bought the lot for uh, eight hundred ninety-eight dollars, and once those are cleaned up, they'll be worth thousands. All right, now on to this: the uh, the, the the little handled eighteenth-century uh, hut food pot. This was a nice one. It was made for the export market, but it had its original lid and was in good, pretty good condition. And uh, it ended up selling for just two bids: four hundred ninety-nine dollars. Perfectly reasonable buy. Perfectly reasonable. Nice looking thing. And then over here, the same seller had this uh, teapot. He had it just as 18th century. It looks like a Kang Shi example to me, judging by the, uh, the body and the foot and so forth. Uh, and uh, it, it went for $768. But it's a nice pot. It's a popular and very desirable form. Um, he didn't date it at all for some reason. I don't know why. He knows what the stuff is, but he didn't, and uh, there it is. Okay, and then over here, the Famil Rose Moon Flask. The, these, are, these were made, as everyone knows, in pretty big numbers toward the end of the 19th century in blue and white, Femi Ver, Femi Rose, landscape scenes, butterfly scenes. Every pattern available ended up on the face of, a, of the Moon Flask, which were, of course, extremely popular um, during the Qinlung period, and, and the basic shape came out of the Ming period. But uh, they still were making them. This wasn't a terribly big one. Uh, this one was, I think, seven or eight inches tall. And it did pretty well, though. It brought $441. Uh, not bad. Uh, and then on to this. These brought a lot of money. And I'm, I'm, I'm sort of scratching my head as to why, to be perfectly honest. They're nice. We've seen these this form turn up before. They're late 19th century. They had some sort of interesting script behind the central figure. They're a mirrored pair, uh, ruffled rim, uh, Famille Rose 19th century jars. And the price, $3,222. Um, typically, the, these are 14 inches tall. Typically, these, these as single vases... And that size sell for you know six to eight hundred, so you know it, it's, it's just, it just seemed like a little bit on the high side. But there may have been just somebody out there that had to have a pair, and so they paid probably a uh, like something something on the line of a, a eight hundred dollar premium to get them. All right, but anyway, that was a uh, pretty nothing wrong with them. But I thought the price was was a bit on the steep side. All right, and then over here, you remember a few weeks ago there was a the uh, a pair of these lotus tiles that came up. This is another pair from the same seller. These are not the same ones. Um, the other ones had bir uh, bir birds placed in different positions and whatnot. Uh, I suspect these were all dismantled out of a screen at some time because often what happens is you have screens with a whole bunch of these tiles on them, and by the time you know you get to today with them, because these were done in the 19th century, um, inevitably it seems a number of them are busted, not worth selling, and so they pop them out of the screen and sell them off individually. And uh, these brought pretty much the same price that the last pair brought, $798. The other pair was right around there as well. Uh, so you sort of get an idea of what the, they're worth, about 400 bucks a piece these days. All right, or, or, or 300 or something like that. Then there was this, the, the, uh, the uh, Femi uh, June uh, uh, Dragon teapot. I thought this was a fairly reasonable buy. It was a focally done teapot. It was a 19th century one. It was old. This had good age to it. And, uh, it, and it went for just $191. So if, you, if you're a teapot buyer and you got that, good. It was a nice thing. All right, and then this, the, the bell form, um, uh, 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 18th century uh, export mug with the figures on the outside. This is sort of an unusual little little mug. I liked it. I, it had the, the, the uh, rue head uh, uh, handle end on it. It did have a little repair or hairline there in the handle. But the decoration was nifty. I liked the decoration. You often see the same decoration on Chinese export that was sent into France. And here's this fellow pointing up an immortal with a tiger. 
Um, very unusual decoration on this mug. If you're a mug collector, this was a good one. I hope you got it. And uh, it ended up going for just $314. Not a bad buy. It was missing a fair bit of gilt around the upper rim. This it was all gilded up here at the top. And most of it is gone probably because it's been used a lot. And they, and the cleanings and all that stuff, that sort of that sort of strips it off. Uh, this just sold this morning. This was that, that nice little sort of almost like a Monteith bowl. But it was a lotus rim, uh, barb rimmed thing with these black ducks circling it. Just a nifty little pattern. I like this. All right, and here's a picture of the bottom. Um, here it is, the mark on it, probably Tung Chi period around there. And uh, it went for $1,291. I think partly because it was in such very good condition. The enamels on it looked good. The gilding was all intact. And all of that adds up and helps the price. All right, nice looking, nice looking geese. And then this, this was that uh, another one of these winter scene uh, Republic period vases. Uh, this was a very well done one. It came up right after that square Kong that had the same type of winter scenes with the white enamels and black enamels uh, that sold, I think, two weeks ago. We talked about it. <clears throat> and that one brought around $6,000 or so, 5800 5, uh, This appeared either right, right about when that came down or right after. And uh, here it is. It's got the Chinese export wax mark on it, which is okay because these are all, of course, uh, 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 you know, 20th century uh, examples. But the decorations on these, this was very good. Uh, if you look, blow this up and you notice the, the, even this little tiny man who's very small, even has a facial expression. And here's somebody coming across in the snow carrying a tray with tea on it. And it, of course, has the blue enamel Chin Lung mark, which isn't, it's not Chin Lung, but that was sort of the, the, one of the standard marks they used on these. Good looking foot, nicely trimmed. Uh, not notice how evenly the glaze ends. Just a very well done piece of porcelain. This just closed this morning, and it ended up doing pretty well. Did very well. It brought $6,188. Um, so so that, was a, that was a good thing to see. That was a nice object. And then on to this. I think this was a steal. I think this went right under the radar. And I think it's because people thought this was from the 1950s or 60s. This was not. This was a Republic period dish. Here's a picture of the back of it. Check out the, the, the foot rim in that and that, 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 that glaze, that slight peel to it. This very nice shading, very nice decoration, very three-dimensional in the corner here. You should notice how they added some pigment here to give a little bit of shading, like, like it's in a co shaded corner. Same thing down along the bottom. This was a beautifully painted plate. And uh, it, it went, let's look at this. This went really reasonably. $494. Okay, I think that was a very, very good buy. It wasn't marked. That was a, a really fine quality and very pictorial, very, very, very charming scene, like a little painting. All right. Oh, let's mosey on over here. This was something I put this in. I like this. As many of you know, I like sort of funky oddball wooden things and, uh, you know, dom domestic wares, things that people had in their houses. And this, as you all know, is a, is a bamboo and it's got some lacquer on it, birdcage. And uh, at first it was in really good condition. Uh, which which got my attention because most of the time half these 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 bars are broken. You could still put birds in this, and it's a, a nice double gourd shape, which I think makes it attractive, reminiscent of the of porcelain pieces. There's a little handle on the bottom, but what was interesting was that it had had all of its feeders with their original wooden mounts, and uh, these feeders are highly collectible, uh, and uh, I, this thing for that reason I think was a steal. Uh, because we've had these feeders over the years, and the bottom the bottom price of these tends to be somewhere around seventy five to one hundred and twenty five dollars a piece. Some of them bring a lot more. Some of them can bring three or four hundred dollars. Here's a picture of the bottom, and this whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle, only went for one hundred and ninety dollars. All right which I think was a steal. I thought that was extremely reasonable. Um, if, you, if you like Chinese uh, housewares and house goods and stuff like that, that was a very good buy. The, I think the feeders are probably worth around 400 by themselves, okay, four or 500. All right, now over to this, another Republic vase. This is also a Republic or possibly 1950s, but very, very good quality um, and um, I liked it a lot. I thought this was a good one. And this one went very reasonably, $366. It may have looked too new to some people or something. They thought it was new. I'm not sure. Uh, but this was this was an older one. And there's the bottom. It's got that same chin lung mark that we just saw in the Republican one. But the decoration, the way the faces are shaded, tend to make me think it may be uh, from the 50s. 
Uh, you, some people may disagree on that, but they, they has it listed as Republic. But I'm, I, th I think it might have been just a little bit after, but still, beautiful quality and very reasonable. All right, and then there was this, the butterfly vase that we talked about, and uh, it was the one that had, as you may recall, it had the chiseled, uh, drilled out bottom. It had been made into a table lamp at some point in its life, probably in the 20s or the 30s. And uh, beautifully done butterflies, nice, nice finish on these. And, you know, in perfect condition, these can bring, as I mentioned last week, I think, like I said, 15, 20, 25,000, depending on the uh, quality of the decoration. And this, because it was drilled, it got held back, of course, and it ended up selling for $8,831. It moved up a little bit um, after we saw it last week, and that was it. But uh, nice looking, uh, nice looking butterfly vase, and it was a real one. So if you want to learn about the enamels on these, you just come over and look at this because the enamels on it were quite good. All right, and now over to this, the Kangxi Charger. Uh, this was a very nice Kangxi dish. Last week when we, well, when we put it up initially, I think it was at about $8, but uh, uh, we knew it what would happen at the end. But nicely decorated, those little small flowers, that, those alternating panels of textiles at the top, lots going on, and it was around 15 inches in diameter. And I, I believe was the width on it. And last week we thought, you know, it'll bring, it probably should bring fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. And it ended up selling for sixteen hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, it was thirty-eight uh, centimeters or fifteen inches in size. That was a good price. That was a, not a heavy price for that. It was a good buy, uh, as, as much as anything. It was a good-looking thing, pretty and interesting. I liked it. And lastly is this, is that, uh, that uh, aubergine glazed uh, 18th century incense burner with the turquoise glazed handles. This was a nice thing, all right? The seller was pretty certain it was uh, Kang Shi. I'm not going to disagree with him. And uh, it went, I think, for a very reasonable price. I don't think it was, it was it wasn't a bad price, but, but 1662 for one of these um, isn't, isn't bad at all. Uh, rather unusual. You see them most often in cobalt. Um, of course, and uh, um, very ra rarely enameled with Femil Rose or, or, or Femi Ver or anything like that. But nice looking thing. All right. And now let's take a look and see what's coming up this week. We haven't finished looking yet. We, I, I, there's a list, I guess, that has things on it I haven't seen yet. And we're going to work those into the newsletter. Some of the things are already on the eBay Today page because we, we, when we see them during the week, if we see something, we'll throw it on the Today page and then save it and then add it into the newsletter later. This is something up. This is something Scrap Dixon has over over in France. I love this. This little um, celadon glazed and and brown uh, uh, brown dressed uh, figure of an immortal uh, or a monk. Beautifully done, uh, and it's a, he, he says it's a Shiwan uh, Bodhama. He's probably right on that. It's got two days to go. It's only up to twenty six dollars. He also has a really nice. Uh, it's either uh, a, a, a pack tong or, or, or copper that's turned a little white uh, hand warmer, a small one with lots of decoration and a beautiful lid. Uh, he finds good stuff over there. And uh, this is a nice little figure. It's about six inches tall. And uh, that, should, that's, that, that, I think, uh, has quite a ways to go to, to get to its full price. But it's a nice thing. So let's see what happens. And then on to this. Uh, this robe popped up uh, just the other day. Uh, beautiful dragon robe. Nice one. Good detail. Beautiful skirt with these lotus blossoms going across the bottom. And I think it's a bit older than the seller thinks it is. And uh, we'll see how that does. It's already up to $898. Uh, it's had 12 bids. And uh, it's, a, it's a good looking piece of silk. That'll be in the newsletter. All these things will be in the newsletter this week. And then over here, this is listed, this is a nice uh, uh, Kuan Yin figure, but the seller accidentally, I'm going to have it in the newsletter, but just be aware that the, the, this is not Chinese porcelain. This is a piece of Japanese porcelain, but it's good quality. It really is. This is a nice piece of Japanese porcelain. Um, there's the figure, uh, that, that, that headpiece is always Japanese. It's never Chinese. Um, holding some scrolls, stippled ground over the ropes, so forth. It's only up to $23. It's got nine hours to go, so it ends later today. It is on the eBay Today page, so a lot of you have seen it, and I'll see how that does. This is also going to be in it. This is a, a, a really nice old Yixing uh, inscribed and, and decorated brush pot. Uh, it looks like it's been in sort of a, a musty, damp place for a while. I would, I would give it a little bit of a cleaning up, but a uh, nice-looking thing. All right. And then this. Um, I, I put this on the on the uh, uh, 
eBay Today page the other day when I came across it, when it went up. This is a really good piece of soapstone, okay? I'm just telling you. And uh, if you want to see some comparables, you've seen them at Christie's. Here's one of them, okay? Um, this, is, this is a little bit uh, better one, but not much better, okay? This is a nice old one. And this one sold a while ago for 312,000 uh, Hong Kong dollars. So divide that by eight. You're, you're at about uh, 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 30,000. Uh, the range for these, these figures is typically, you know, uh, you know 8,000 to uh, 15,000, 20,000. This is a nice piece of uh, soapstone. And he, did, he got some good pictures of it. Uh, very, very nice, you know, maybe write him for a condition report. But this is a good, high quality piece of carving. And uh, we'll see how it does. It is currently up to just $44. It's got six days to go. It ends next Thursday. Get over there and drop some money on this thing if you like carvings. That's a good one. All right. Double check on condition, but nice thing. All right. And then on to this, the Kangxi Triple Gourd Vase. Uh, the seller that has this, I don't think he realizes quite what it is because uh, he just listed it as a Chinese vase. That's a Kangxi vase right there. That's it beautiful foot very much like that blue and white jaw we saw at the beginning of the video his pictures are a little cockamamie but this is a, a nice looking piece of porcelain and it's up to 295 dollars it's got three days to go uh, a beautiful thing this is coming out of and all he described it as his antique chinese vase uh, had he put kang shi in there femi ver he would probably be a thousand dollars higher than he is right now um, unfortunately, but but you know if you like Kang Shi vases, this is a good one. And uh, as I recall, it was a it was sort of a nice size. Um, uh, okay, there he's saying okay, 100% guaranteed to be Kang Shi. He now realizes he didn't include it in the uh, description. Uh, and it's 26 centimeters, so it's about eight inches tall. Nice little vase, typical size. Nice nice thing. All right, we'll see how that does. All right, and then this. If some of you have seen these, we added these actually early to the uh, uh, to the newsletter page, just so we wouldn't forget them. Um, these, to me, certainly do look like rhinoceros horn cups. Um, I found them and I put them up, and a few people have written me and asked me because the seller does not say what they are made of, but I suspect he knows they're rhino horn because he's selling in the United States. All of his other sellings, he ships globally. On these, U.S. only, because these will never get through customs legally. Um, uh, it's a federal offense, but he's got them on eBay. Somebody in the U.S. will buy them. It's got, they got one bid. Um, they're not in perfect condition by a long shot. They've got chips and nicks to them, but uh, they sure look like rhino horn to me. So we'll just leave it there. All right, now over to Catawiki. What do they got going on? Uh, they got this. This is a nice um, swag tr uh, rim decorated uh, uh, sort of a f almost Fitzhugh type of 18th century blue and white platter. It's about a foot long, uh, but a nice one. Very prettily deco decorated, and it's only up to about $90, 89 bucks. All right, and that closes um, on uh, uh, Saturday. It closes tomorrow. It'll be in the newsletter. This is very nice. This is a lovely little wine cup, stem-footed wine cup, Kung Shi period. Uh, beautiful decoration. It has that pencil sort of decoration on it uh, through the flowers. That I, I love that stuff, how they do that. Quick, quick, quick. The nice little quick brush strokes. And uh, here's another side of it here. And this, and you see the lotus uh, stem coming up. And so forth and we'll see how that does it's up to 442 dollars this also closes uh this closes on sunday but it's desirable and the whole cat all the catawiki stuff will be updated it's right underneath the ebay listings on the newsletter page and it's right underneath the ebay listings over on the uh, uh ebay today page all right and then there's this this nice 1780s uh chinese export famille rose teapot uh, it's up to $387. So far, it's got one bid. And uh, lastly is this, this beautiful late Ming um, uh, dish with the, with, the, with the dog tooth border for the Japanese market. Uh, nice, nice uh, landscape scene. Very, very scholarly looking. And uh, this one's getting quite a bit of interest. And it's up to $719. It closes in uh, two days. So it closes on Sunday. That'll be in the newsletter along with the other stuff and uh, all that all that 
All right, and that's that's it for the week. It's it's been a pretty good week, and I hope everybody's enjoying the, the weather. And we're uh, talking to Catawiki about doing some other things with them, um, about how to how to sell on the site. We're going to put together a video. Hopefully, if we get some time next week, we didn't have much time this week because we had we had a number of house calls to go on. It required some driving, so I was out of the office quite a bit this week, in and out. But uh, we'll get around to it, and we're going to look into uh, software and the technology needed, uh, maybe to heavily expand the site and uh, start pulling in uh, a lot of stuff from around the world. Um, we have to look at it uh, about its viability and how to do it. The, you know, great problems, and uh, we'll we'll keep you abreast of it as we go along. Okay, have a great weekend, and I'll see you all next week. And we're also working on a video. It should be up by Wednesday for the Christie's and Sotheby sales uh, that are happening uh, the 9th, 10th, 12th, 13th. We'll try to get them up right around the time the sales happen for those of you who can't be there. All right, have a great weekend and see you next time. Bye-bye.